The Thousand Door remake is currently everywhere on the internet. We haven't gotten any new footage since the last direct, however we do have a lot more information and screenshots. In this video, I'm going over every single piece of new information that we currently know about the Thousand Year Door. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's go over the reveal trailer first. Firstly, the story introduction is a bit different. Originally, the camera panned down at the book, and after some dialogue, it opens up. However, here, the angle is a bit different. You can see that there's some sort of sun effect when the book opens that wasn't present in the original. Of course it looks a hundred times better than the original game, but that's to be expected. Next up is Mario's house. There are a few noticeable changes. First off, the ground seems to pop out a lot more than the original game. The bushes no longer have patterns on them like dots in the original. The mailbox lost its opening, but it now has a flag, which I guess is an upgrade. The biggest change, however, is that it seems like Mario's house was upgraded, adding a big blue part. Paracarry also has not changed much, aside from his nose being a tad bigger. Although I do wonder how he's putting that letter in the mailbox. Now let's go inside the house. A few things have changed, such as most of the items in the house looking a lot cleaner and popping out. And the biggest change by far is a framed picture of all the partners from the original Paper Mario game, which I absolutely adore. Another change is that when Mario walks to Luigi, you can no longer see the other room like in the original. Next up is the letter. When Luigi reads it out loud, it sounds like Princess Peach is reading it, not Luigi. And instead of the text being written on paper, it appears in the form of what looks like a cloud. The letter also isn't at the bottom, but it was at the original, which is kinda strange. Moving on to Rogue Port, it has many differences. Aside from getting a complete revamp graphic wise, the save block has a bit of changes. It has a very thick black outline in it, and the boat's gear changed from bright yellow to seemingly a dark yellow, and the funnel is now open. The barrels also have their position changed. Now actually going inside of Rogue Port, thankfully the news has not been censored and it stays there. The text on the sign is now legible, well, in Paper Mario language anyway, and two guards are present here now. Other than that, most stuff is the same. Next up is Petal Meadows, and I know I already brought this up before, but this game looks absolutely gorgeous. The ground is a lot glossier and papery than the original. Going into Petalburg, aside from it looking nicer, there really aren't many big changes. The biggest change I can see is that the fence here is taller, and not as long as in the original game. For Professor Frankly's office, it seems to be a lot smaller than the original. That's all the changes I can really see. However, we don't get a full pan of the entire place, so I don't know if it'll be this small when it releases, so take this with a grain of salt. Again, nothing from Chapter 2 as far as I can tell has changed. The ground looks a lot nicer though, and the trees seem more papery. And aside from more booze, the creepy steeple doesn't have many major changes. For time's sake, I'm going to skip over sections that have little to no changes to keep this video from being around 30 minutes long. But finally, we get to see a big change. In Glitzville, there's a brand new toad in the game. We have absolutely no clue what this toad will do or does, but it has a cool design. We also get to see the Traveling Sisters 3, which is an odd name, again, which is nice. And this tablet thing has now been converted into a GBA. While it does kind of look like a GBA in the original, we can now see that's more circular around the edges, and it says Game Boy Advance right here. I should have mentioned this earlier, but characters now have unique voice lines. Just listen to Luigi and Koops. Better than the ear grating sound from the original, that's for sure. That's like engraved into my mind. And the question blocks have also changed too. They're a lot more crumpled up and papery in the remake. Back to Hooktail's castle, when Mario hits the switch it crumples up and has a more paper effect, like the question blocks, than the original. The transition is also a lot more faster when the stairs flip, which is a nice quality of life feature. Now for the part you've all been waiting for, the battle system. The transition is a lot more dramatic than the original scenery just popping up out of nowhere. We can see the crowd rushing in too instead of just being there waiting for us. The UI at the top is a lot more clean and now only in one row at the top. And the button to swap between yourself and your partner is now green. When Mario selects jump, the A button appears much closer to Mario, whereas in the original it was a bit further to the left. Aside from obvious UI and button changes to match the switch, that's pretty much it for the battle system. 
When we see what Bowser's up to, Bowser now says Lunkhead instead of Airhead. The reason why I think this change is probably because Airhead is copyrighted by the company, you know, Airheads the candy, which is mediocre. And to avoid any possible infringements, they just change it to be safe. And for the Bowser level sections, we can see the controls at the bottom left, which is a nice quality of life feature. Now for the really minor stuff, the blimp in Glitzville now is a clear window, where we can see Mario and his friends clearly. When Mario gets cursed, lightning now strikes down at him, which wasn't in the original. He kinda just got cursed. In Twilight Town, when a Twilighter turns into a pig, Mario and his partner now have a new shocked expression, which looks goofy and kinda creepy at the same time. Now I'm going to discuss the most obvious thing. The characters look a lot more nicer than the original. Their body parts now pop out instead of just blending together like the original. They also have really nice black outlines to them. Aside from a few small changes with Tech and his room, that's pretty much it for the trailer. Let's get into the brand new screenshots from the Japanese website. There are a lot of new screenshots, however there aren't many changes. In this screenshot, Mario has a new expression which looks really goofy. We also get a better look at Rogueport sewers which looks gorgeous. And we also have a picture of East Rogueport, which does have some changes, like a sign where Professor Frankly's building is, and one right here for the mail place, which wasn't in the original. And finally, we got the box art. The box art looks very similar to the Japanese original box art, but it looks a lot more polished, kind of like Mario RPG's box art. So thanks for watching the video. Before we go, I want to talk about an important channel update. If you've noticed, I haven't been making any shorts lately, and I plan to not make as many as I used to. I want to grow my channel by making log form content, so I won't be uploading many shorts anymore. But videos will come a lot more often at very high quality. And while there won't be many shorts, I will upload some shorts. And that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope I can see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.